All rise. This is Deeper Than Money. Talk to me. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchett is compelling. If he is not going to honor you, he needs to be gone. Compassionate. I don't want you to give up on your dreams. I don't. And I want to figure out how we get this straight. She's powerful. If I were in this situation, I would have put you out too. And she's on the bench. I feel like I'm being judged here. <laughs> That's what I do. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Susan Pritchett is suing Nathan Richardson in the amount of $10,000. Ms. Pritchett claims she took good care of Mr. Richardson's elderly mother and says he fired her when his mother wandered off after her shift ended. Oh my goodness, Ms. Pritchett, you're in court suing the defendant for some $10,000? It's my understanding that you were the caretaker for his mother. That's correct. And that his mother uh, needed care because she suffered from dementia. Is that, is that fair? Is that, is that how I describe it properly? Yes. All right, Ms. Pritchett, tell me what happened and why is it necessary for you to be in my courtroom today suing Mr. Richardson? So I'm suing because Mr. Richardson wrongfully terminated me for circumstances that were beyond my control. So explain to me what happened. So I'm an at-home nurse Okay. And he hired me to take care of his 77-year-old mother for Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. And, okay. and he, in the beginning, didn't believe she needed a live-in nurse. That she so stop needed. right there. So, Mr. Richardson, when you hired Ms. Pritchett, Correct. what were the circumstances? Describe to me why you hired her and what your expectations were. So we started about two years ago. Right. And when we first started, my mother's dementia wasn't really all that bad. It was just in the beginning stages. And as time started to progress, my caregiver told me that her circumstances were sort of going downhill. And that is often the case. Of course. As people age with that condition, mm -hmm. that the condition gets worse. Most definitely. And me, I'm a full-time entrepreneur, so I don't have the time every day to be catering to my mother. So that's why we're here, because I needed help with the caregiver, simply. I you had to help. hire someone. Yeah. You needed help. You get what I'm saying? So here I was with the caregiver. I needed her help. And two years ago, before anything got out of control, we basically had an agreement, a verbal agreement. Where and she, what was that agreement? That agreement was simply just, she watches my mother from 7 to 7. and So 7 a.m. Yep, 7 a.m. So during the day. Most definitely. From 7 a.m. Yep. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. was the agreement. Yep. And my mother lives alone. So, yeah. like... I work, and I get off of work at 8 some days. I get off of work some days later. So I try to communicate and ask her, hey, can you work these hours 7 to 7? That was really the time so that the I felt like. So the agreement was that, yeah, that's the 7 time to 7 set. during yep. the day. Exactly. All right, because you work during the day, and you needed help. Mm -hmm. And so it seems to me very wise that you wanted to have someone in there caring for your mother. Most definitely. So Ms. Pritchett did that for two years. Correct. But yet and still she's in my courtroom today. So yes. something happened. Ms. Pritchett, what happened? So I was in within my contracted hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and I kept seeing her decline. After two years she was starting to decline. Right. So I told the defendant several times that I believe she needed More extra help. care and if he can bring someone else in to help me out to take care of her but he wouldn't hire anyone else. So when she went to bed one night, she was asleep. She was asleep when I left at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then he had sent me a message asking me, can I, can, he, can I stay longer? But it's within my contracted hours that I have a hard out at seven o'clock PM because my son, I have to pick him up. And I've explained this several times. All right, and I you understood that. You understood? I, I definitely understood okay, that. Okay, so she, her time frame mm -hmm. was 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Correct. And that she couldn't make exceptions mm -hmm. because she had other family responsibilities. Of okay, course. so we both agree on that. Yeah, yeah. So that's there. clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And then this... In the interim, you said to Mr. Richardson that you thought that he needed more care. Yes. Because you saw this decline... Yes. ...in his mother's condition. Yes, and that even if someone came in from that time, the 7, when I leave at 7, that 
when he returns at eight, that someone could at least watch her at that period or even hire a night nurse because she was unsafe and he still refused, that kind of thing. So Mr. Richardson, why not hire somebody for the night? Uh, I mean, hey, that's exactly why we're here, actually, Your all Honor. All right, talk to me. Because it all ended in a termination, but I'm gonna tell you how we got there, simply. Please, Do you mind me. me providing you some evidence? Yes, please. Uh, for sure, for sure, there you go, sir. But now, I want you to answer my question, so, though, and I'm gonna look mm -hmm. at the evidence. Go ahead. If she was seeing a decline, and you mm -hmm. acknowledged that your mother's condition was mm -hmm. declining. And I definitely acknowledged it. And, and, mm -hmm. and she is recommending that she needed more care and recommended a night nurse. Most definitely. Why didn't you hire a night nurse for her? Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. So, Ms. Pritchett, from your perspective, what happened? I kept suggesting these changes that she needed more help, and he refused. He said he thought she was fine. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Susan Pritchett, who is suing Nathan Richardson for unpaid wages. So you're telling me that the reason she was terminated is because she was replaced with somebody else? Mm hmm most definitely she was replaced. So you replaced her with somebody 24 seven? Yep, somebody who lives in the house now with my mother. Full-time living nurse. Interesting. All right, so Ms. Pritchett, from your, from your perspective, what happened? Okay, so I kept suggesting these changes that she needed more help, and he refused. He said he thought she was fine. So with that being said, we moved on with my regular schedule, and then one night, I went home at 7 o'clock, like usual, and he had sent me a text saying he'll be late, but when I left, I got a frantic call at 8 o'clock at night saying So, that, excuse me, that is the text exchange we're talking about right this now. This is, that's what I was going to get into, the evidence. So, we had a situation where one day I tried to communicate in advance because, you know, sometimes as an executive, you know, you get, you get those late night calls. I do, so I, I do. Had, so, I had a Zoom call from 7.30 to 8.30 and I told her, like, the house isn't too far. I could be over there, but I realistically have to be in this meeting. I can't just drop everything and go watch my mother. Right, but she had a contract and an agreement that you agreed to. Of course. That she had to be out. She had a heart out at 7 o'clock. Of course. And right. I think it could have been better communicated, but it's more so she just neglected my mother and left. How like, did she neglect your mother? She, as you can see, she says in a text message that she's sleeping, but... When I got home at 8.45, she was not sleeping. She was not even in the house. So where was she? <sighs> Would you like to tell her where she was? The call, he, he, well, when you called me, he, when the defendant called me, he said, my mother's missing. And so I assumed she must have gotten confused some, at some point and left. But when I left the house, she was asleep. Right. So I immediately went to his house. I went with him. And for two hours, we went around looking for her. And then finally we got a call from the neighbor saying she's safe at their house. Thank goodness. Yeah. Thank goodness. We got her back home, put her in the bed, put lucky. her in the bed, and then he tells me it's my fault. He yeah, blamed me for it happening. Safe. Why she was lucky, why she was lucky it that she's safe fault? now? Think about it. If I it, am thinking about it, Mr. Richardson. My mother Richardson. could have been anywhere. Yes, I <laughs> am thinking about sure. it. She had a contract. There was an agreement that she had to be out by 7. <sighs> You Just had a Zoom call, you could not get there, but you've also told me in sworn testimony that you typically didn't leave work every night until eight. Not so this is all. not the first time no. that your mother's been left at home mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. And so how is it Miss Pritchett's fault that when she left, she fulfilled her responsibilities and left exactly. at 7 p.m., mm -hmm. you did not get there until 8.45, she then gets this call and she then comes to try to help find your mother. How is it that it's her fault that your mother went missing? Exactly. I, that's what I'm trying to understand. My role as a judge mm -hmm. is to hear both sides mm -hmm. and to listen clearly to both sides. Mm -hmm. But I'm, you're not telling me how this is her fault. Exactly. It was communicated in advance that I would be home late and I just think that we could have we could have worked something out, and there was a, a strong lack of communication. But also, it's just like I could hire someone else. 
or I could pay her. But at the end of the day, by hiring someone else, they're there full time. They're there all day. So now I took it upon myself. Like she gave me great advice. She would tell me oh, every day, oh, your mother's getting sick. Your mother's getting sick. Your mother's getting sick. Like think about all the trauma that comes with that. Like I'm literally emotionally distressed by all of this. Like I know she's sick. You get what I'm saying? That's why I'm paying you to help me. But you get, like, Does that not make sense? It does make sense. But Mr. Richardson, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that your agreement with Ms. Pritchett was from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I'm mm -hmm. going to say it again. Mm -hmm. It was not her responsibility for your mother after 7 p.m., even if you communicated to her that you needed to be late, she has always said, I have to be gone by 7.30. Now, if you were that concerned, it would have, well, you got a 24 hour care now, but on that evening, you know, I have done Zooms in different places. I, you know, I mean, I've done Zooms, uh, you know, outside the soccer field for my mm. grandchildren. I mean, listen, you have to do what you have to do, right? <laughs> got to get there to cheer, but you got to be on the Zoom call. My point is that I know that your business is important. You're an entrepreneur with that comes enormous responsibilities, enormous responsibilities. That is not lost on me. But you have not made it clear to me why this woman was responsible for your mother being missing that night. Mr. Richardson? Your Honor, can I say something? Yes. I cared about her too. I knew her more than anybody else knew her. I knew her better than her own son knew her. And when she went, dis when she came up disappearing, I came back immediately, even though I had my own child at home and I had to find someone to take care of him for me to get back over there to help him find his mom. Right. It, just as he loves his mom, I have responsibilities for my child too. So I get to my child, he calls with this thing. It's, it's very upsetting that she's missing because I care, I've been two years with her, 12 hours a day. So then I go back home, I get someone else to help keep my kids so I can run over and help them with her. That's outside of my contracted hours. That's not when I'm supposed to be there. So you can't hold me neglectful when that's not when I'm supposed to be there. Coming up. You are suing for $10,000. Tell me what that $10,000 is based on. Um, when he terminated me, I have been out of work for so many months, I'm worth more than this. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Susan Pritchett, who is suing Nathan Richardson for unpaid wages. So you are suing for $10,000. Tell me what that $10,000 is based on, Ms. Pritchett. For missed work. I'm worth more than this, than what he gave me. I feel like he should respect me for what I've done with his family and not treat me the way he has, but I, I'm owed more than this. But in California, I'm only allowed to sue for $10,000, so that's what I'm doing. But he owes me more than that. Welcome to California. <laughs> Mr. Richardson, this woman has been with your mother 12 hours a day for two years. You know, and I think that she was honest in saying she needs more care. Well, we could have well, worked just... together on finding someone else together if, if I can't do the job the way I'm supposed to because I know her more than anybody else. <laughs> I can help train someone. Excuse you. I'm sorry. I can help Go train ahead. someone. So that's an abrupt change right, from that's one what I'm person saying. to another without a bridge. You right. You provide the so bridge. So that I can work with that person and then they learn the job and then we can kind of make a smoother transition that way, especially with, an, with dementia and Alzheimer's, yeah. you don't just go th from switching like that, which was a breach of my contract. I have my contract here. I'd like to see that uh, contract, please. Be easier. Your Honor, put yourself in my shoes, for real. You come home that day and your mother just missing, what you gonna do? You gonna go crazy. That's what I, that's simply what I happened. I, and I okay. don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that, Mr. Richardson. Listen, my mother didn't suffer from dementia or Alzheimer's, thank God. But we were in a crowded place in New York. We had gone to see the theater. I turned my back to try to find a cab. I look around. I don't see her. I was like, oh, my God. Coming up. I'm sure you're thinking, what if she's not alive anymore? That's I mean, why you know, I was trying to avoid that happening to her in the first place. And I, I didn't want that to be left Richard, where I she'd have that. no care. I believe that.
You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Susan Pritchett, who is suing Nathan Richardson for unpaid wages. I can only imagine the, the anxiety, the fear, the frustration, and I'm sure you're thinking, what if she's not alive anymore? That's I mean, why you know, I was trying to avoid that happening to her in the first place. And I, I didn't want that to be left Richard, where I she'd have that. no care. I believe that, and I believe that you're sincere, and I believe that you have this woman, his mother's uh, best interest. So I see the contract. I see how you were paid. And so you're basically saying that this is four months? It's three. It's, it's three a, months. It's a, it's a little under three months. Okay. And I was Mr. Owed Richardson, more than that. I, I get that you had to get somebody else, mm -hmm. but do you really think it was fair? I mean, we're really talking about fairness right now. I'm not going so much legal as I'm talking about what's fair. This woman has poured her life into taking care of Most family. definitely. I believe that this is more than a job for her. Mm -hmm. I believe that she really cared for her. Um, and you can't put a price on that. No, nah, you can't you put a price on that. You cannot put a price on that. So, Mr. Richardson, why not pay her something? I, I didn't mind paying her at all. It's just, if someone tells me they can't do the job, why am I going to give them the job they can't do? Make it make sense. Because I she said she cannot work after seven. So now I find someone who could work after seven. I did the and job I'm I was the bad supposed guy. to do. I'm the bad guy. But you fired me. I didn't you fired fire me you. as if you I asked did. to be fired. This is I didn't different. ask she to be fired. No, 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 no. Let's be honest. Let's be honest about this. She asked to not be employed. Mr. Richardson, you're changing your tune in here now that you're in court. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. You fired her because you said that she was responsible for your mother missing Negligence. that night, and you were of angry. Negligence. You, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. You fired her for something that she didn't have responsibilities exactly. to control. So, Mr. Richardson, you told me that you came home, that she was drunk and passed out on the sofa, and that your mom had gone missing? That would be a totally different conversation. That's not what happened here. That is not what happened here. I am going to give you six months. I think she's entitled to the money. I'm entering judgment for the plaintiff, but I understand your situation. I understand your entrepreneur. I'm going to give you 12 months, but I am entering judgment in favor of the plaintiff in this situation because you really terminated her because of something that she didn't have control exactly. over. And if I thought for a second that she was negligent, I would be all over her. She was not. I believe she had your mother's best interest in heart. And you should be thankful that she was there for the two years that she gave you service. If nothing further, judgment in favor of the plaintiff, we will stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $10,000. You should have never treated me this way. Man, at least I got a new nanny. All right, gather your belongings. Let's exit this way. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.